Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to write formulas for ionic compounds. And to write the formula for any ionic compound, what you want to do first is write the formulas for your cation and your anion separately. The next thing you want to do is you want to adjust the subscripts on your cation and anion so that the charges cancel, meaning that they sum up to zero. And the way that we usually do this is by finding the least common multiple of the charges. One last tip. Just like when we name ionic compounds, when we write the formula for an ionic compound, we want to write the cation first. So that's just the convention that we use. The positively charged cation always comes before the negatively charged anion, both in the name and in the formula. So let's go through a couple of examples. What is the formula for cesium chloride? Our cation is the cesium ion, which is Cs plus. Since cesium is a group 1A metal, it forms an ion that has a plus 1 charge. And then we have our chloride ion, which is our anion. That's just going to be Cl minus because chlorine is in group 7A, it's a halogen, so it forms an ion that has a minus one charge. And then adjusting the subscripts at this point is pretty easy because we have a positive one and we have a negative one, so the least common multiple of those charges is just going to be one. So our final formula then is CSCl. Let's do another one. How about calcium fluoride? What is the formula for calcium fluoride? Our cation is going to be the calcium ion, which is Ca2+. Since calcium is a group 2A metal, it forms an ion with a positive 2 charge. And then fluoride ion, that's F minus. And if you look at your periodic table, you'll see that fluorine is also in the same group as chlorine, which is 7A, or the halogens. So it forms an ion that has a minus 1 charge. And then if we adjust the subscripts, well, it looks like we can leave the calcium alone and then double the amount of fluoride ions so that the charges cancel overall. So what I like to do is I, I just like to multiply these two numbers together and then add them. So we have positive 2 times 1, that's positive 2. And then we have negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. Well, if we add positive 2 and negative 2, we'll get 0. So that means our formula then is going to be CaF2. And let's do another one. Ammonium nitrate. What is the formula for ammonium nitrate? The ammonium ion, our cation, is going to be NH4, and it has a plus one charge. Ammonium ion is just one of those polyatomic ions that is worth memorizing. Same thing with the nitrate ion. The formula for the nitrate ion is NO3 minus just kind of something that you should memorize. And then if we adjust the subscripts, just like when we did cesium chloride, we have a one-to-one -one ratio of positive and negative charge, so we can just leave them at one. So our final formula is going to be NH4NO3.
How about aluminum hypochlorite? What is the formula for aluminum hypochlorite? Our cation is going to be the aluminum ion, which is Al3+. Notice that there's no Roman numeral that comes in parentheses that comes after the aluminum. Why is there no Roman numeral? Well, because Al3 plus is the only ion that aluminum can form. So aluminum isn't in group 1A, it isn't in group 2A either. It's a transition metal, but it's one of the few tr transition metals that only forms one type of cation. Zinc, silver, and scandium are the other three. Our hypochlorite ion, that's just another polyatomic ion, is going to be ClO, and it has a minus one charge. So now let's adjust the subscripts. We can leave our aluminum alone, give it a subscript of one, and then we can triple the amount of hypochlorite ions. Positive three times one, that's just going to be positive three. Negative one times three, that's going to be negative three. So if we add positive 3 plus negative 3, we'll get neutral, or 0. So our final formula is going to be Al, ClO, and then in parentheses, 3. Let's do one more. Lead to phosphate. Our cation is going to be the lead 2 ion, Pb2. So, although lead can form more than one type of cation, this Roman numeral in parentheses tips you off which one. So, it's a Pb2 ion. And then the formula for our phosphate ion is going to be PO4. 3 negative, just another one of those common polyatomic anions. And now if we adjust the subscripts, well, at this point adjusting the subscripts isn't as easy as just leaving one of the ions alone and then doubling or tripling or quadrupling the other one. Here we actually have to find the least common multiple. So the least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. Pretty basic math, shouldn't be too bad. So the way I like to think about it is, let's start with our cation, Pb2+. Our cation has a positive two charge, so what do, we, what do I have to multiply two by to get six? Two times what is equal to six? The answer, three. And then with our anion, we're going to approach it the same way. We're going to say, what do we have to multiply 3 by to get 6? And the answer is 2. 3 times 2 equals 6. So we have a positive 2 times 3. That's equal to 6. Positive 6, that is. And then we have a negative 3 times 2. That's just going to be negative 6. If we add the positive 6 and the negative 6 together, then we will get zero. So our final formula is going to be PB3, PO4, in parentheses, subscript 2. So there you go. That is how to write formulas for ionic compounds.